It seems like today more than ever, we've really had to discuss what it means to be the church. It's really hard to gather, and every time we do so, it seems like the rules change on us. And to be fair, we're all trying to set targets, but that target keeps moving. And that's okay. We can still worship God. I want us to consider something. You see, Solomon built the first temple. And when he built this first temple, Solomon built it with the best materials, the best artisans. He spared no expense to build this amazing architectural structure to worship God. And shortly after he built the temple, Second Chronicles tells us that the Spirit of God built it. What an amazing image. In fact, it says that it filled it so much that the priests couldn't do their work. Imagine there being so much God that we don't have room for what we call religion. It's a wonderful image. And shortly thereafter, Solomon begins to consecrate the temple with a prayer. And in this amazing prayer, he reminds us of some important facts. You see, Solomon reminds us that the temple is a place where those who look to it can find God. That it's a place where God, the creator of all things, heaven literally touches creation. They come together in this one spot. And so those who would look to it can find hope because their God is willing to reside with them. Those who would confess their sins could find forgiveness there. But it wasn't just a place for hope and forgiveness and restoration for the Jewish community, for the people of God, but even for the foreigner, even for those who never heard of Yahweh or ever believed in him. He says that even the foreigner could turn to it and find hope and find redemption. This is an amazing image and really just a great precedent that is set. But then you fast forward a thousand years to a baby being born in a manger. God becomes incarnate. He takes on flesh. And Jesus walks the earth. And we find at the baptism, the Holy Spirit and the Father and the Son together, the Holy Trinity, this amazing image. And Jesus himself claims that I am the temple. Only this time, people don't have to come to the temple. He goes to them. The temple literally walks to the hopeless. It walks to the marginalized. It walks to the foreigner. It walks to all those who need God. And he brings healing, restoration, hope, and light everywhere that he goes. This is what Jesus does. We love him for it. But he promises us something else. He says that the Holy Spirit will come upon us so that we might even do greater things than he had done. You see, even the Apostle Paul and the Apostle Peter remind us that we, the believers, we are the temple of God and we're being built into the temple of God. And I know we talk about that a lot as Christians, and we say, well, because I'm the temple, I need to take care of my body. And that's a wonderful thing. Your body is a beautiful thing. But being the temple of God is so much more significant than just taking care of the physical. That what made the temple significant and what makes you significant is that you bear the Holy Spirit. The same Spirit of God that filled the temple in Solomon's time. The same Spirit of God that came upon Christ. The same Spirit of God that hovered over the waters in Genesis. The same Spirit of God that came down at Pentecost. That same Spirit fills you. And that's what makes you the temple. And this comes with a great responsibility because it means that now it's the temple, is the Christian. Your task is to go and do what Jesus did. To take that everywhere that you go. I miss the gathering of people. I do. And it's very important for us to gather together as best we can because it helps us to practice, to reposture ourselves, to be the temple the way we're supposed to be in the world. And now is the time for the church to take up action, to be the temple. Friends, I want to encourage you. Go into the world and be Christ. This should be our primary focus right now. How am I being the temple? How am I taking God to the marginalized, to the foreigner, to the sick? to the hopeless? How are you being the light into the world? That's the question we need to ask ourselves, and that's something worth considering.